All right, after a two-week hiatus, you know, uh, we're back. Uh, Noah McGee was captured by the Taliban. We've been searching for him for two weeks. We finally, uh, we got, finally got him back uh, <laughs> out of enemy hands. Now he's back home in, the, in Henry County, uh, right, Henry County? Correct. That is correct. <laughs> I have a full beard now, too, in the same, like at the same time. So, I mean, I, it's, it's been a long time, obviously, as you can see. Last time I didn't have anything on my face. Happy to uh, happy to rescue you from the bad guys and, uh, you know, uh, G.I. Joe, you back in the safe hands. Uh, you can thank us later. No, it's okay. But anyway, it, it has been a couple of weeks. Uh, we've we had some scheduling issues. We were busy people. So uh, apparently you college kids are real busy, you know. So now we can get together <laughs> today and talk a little uh, Western Kentucky sports. We got a lot to talk about, honestly. Uh, football team is on trending up. And uh, basketball, well, it starts this week. So uh, a lot to talk about, a lot of exciting things going on. Um, first thing we'll talk about, obviously, uh, WKU, we talk about them trending up in football. They have won their last two games. They are five and six on the season. They have defeated uh, Southern Miss 10 to 7 and coming off a fresh victory over FIU 38 to 21. Uh, so they are five and six on the season. And um, I guess I'll start there. Um, what's your thoughts on the football program right now? Five and six on the season. They got one game left against Charlotte. That game has been rescheduled to December 1st with a 9 30 a.m. kickoff. Hey, get your hangovers in, boys. <laughs> Uh, so they've got one game left in the regular season. How do you, how do you, what do you see from this team in the last two games and how do you think they kind of finish out the season is, is there bold possibilities for this team? Uh, Casey, I will start with you. Yeah. So first of all, I just want to say, you know, last time we were on here, I, I kind of went on a rant about WKU football. I was a little upset yeah. with the performance and, uh, where they were at that point in the season. But now it's a different story. I'll give them a little credit. They have bounced back in a good way. Uh, the defense has been very solid over the last three games. Uh, despite losing to FAU, you know, the defense looked good in that game two games ago. So I was pleased with that. So they haven't given up more than 21 points in the last three weeks. And that's great to see from a defense that we thought was going to be great all season long. A uh, huge win over FIU, 38-21. I think I picked the score at 17 to 10. So that greatly surprised me. Uh, them putting up 38 points with the uh, three defensive touchdowns. That was very impressive. Uh, 157 rushing yards as well. I've been talking all season how I wanted to see Gage Walker go off. He finally busted a big long run of 50 plus. That looked really good. He looked strong. Terrell Pigram did what I thought he was going to do all season. He managed the game very well. Was great in the red zone. Had two rushing touchdowns. Uh, Love to see that. No turnovers from the Hilltoppers. Love to see that. And then our guy, Eli Brown, you know, here a Warren County home guy, uh, seven tackles, interception, and that interception was for a touchdown. So that was great to see. Always great to see him after such adversity he's faced in his career, have a great game like that. Uh, our man, Roger Cray, defensive touchdown, scoop and score. He looked great. Can't say enough about his performance. Getting the pro football f focus, uh, team of the week honors with an 89.9 grade. That's awesome to see from him. Uh, just solid defense overall the last three games, though, like I was saying. So uh, it's going to be really uh, key to keep that going against Charlotte. Charlotte's hungry. They haven't played in almost a month. So it's going to be uh, really crucial to see this defense keep that going against Charlotte. But overall, I was very pleased with the win against FIU. Uh, couldn't ask much more from this team. The leaders stepped up like they were supposed to all season long. And it finally all came together, it looks like, for the toppers. Yeah, Casey, you talk about uh, Tyrell Pigram being the game manager. That's probably the best way to describe his game. Uh, not not going to give you some outlandish stats in terms of passing yardage and everything like that, but as long as he can do, uh, be efficient, not turn the ball over, and, uh, you know, get some first downs. That's, uh, that's what you kind of want out of your quarterback anyway. Uh, Noah, I'll flip it to you. Uh, your thoughts on the football team, their, where they're going, uh, how you think they finish out this season, everything like that. Noah, hit me up. All right, well, if Casey talked about the FIU game, I'm going to fast forward two weeks back, and I'm going to talk about Southern Miss because it's time. Mansfield knows is the only game I was able to make it out to for the house. I was on the sidelines uh, shooting some highlights for it, and I will say right now that was a good win, I guess, but I was disappointed with how the guys acted after they won that one. There was a, there was a lot of immaturity, I think, after the game, you know, beating a team with a third-string quarterback and on their third head coach and, you know, just kind of the way that they, you know, and just celebrate after they won it. It reminded me a lot of what happened after the UT Chad game. Uh, I think, once again, I mean, that, you know, 
them on a two-game win streak is awesome, and the defense is playing lights out. But uh, just flash some immaturities there uh, in terms of, uh, you know, just handling yourselves and acting like winners. You know, last year this, last year, this team won nine games, and uh, this year they've obviously struggled and uh, had their fair shares of ups and downs. And so I was just really disappointed to see that. But uh, the way the defense has stepped up and responded over the last three weeks has been quite phenomenal. I mean, you know, defensive touchdowns are, you know, in my opinion, I believe there's a st statistic out there where you win 80 point, you know, 80 something percent of your games if you're going to score a defensive touchdown. And they were able to do that twice last week. So uh, I think that's going to be really key going into next Tuesday, 9.30 a.m., whenever they play Charlotte is uh, – to score some, and as Casey was talking about, Tyrell Pigram, yeah, disappointing year for uh, the quarterback position. I was just looking at his numbers, 237 attempts, and almost 100 incompletions, or might be 100 incompletions on the dot for only 1,200 yards and eight or nine touchdowns. It's just not the production you want out of the quarterback spot, especially whenever the run game can't get going. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been cool to see the turnaround and for these guys to put together two wins. I'm uh, just really disappointed with the uh, – you know, the behavior after the Southern Miss game, I, you know, they had to call that one with 40 seconds left to play, and a lot of people were confused. And uh, But then, you know, last week they, they cleaned it up after a sloppy start and ended up getting another W. So it uh, be nice to see them finish five and six uh, as they, you know, hit the road, take on Charlotte. All right, good thoughts. Uh, they're talking about a little maturity, things like that. I mean, hey, man, it's 2020. you got to celebrate every win, Noah. You know this, right? Yeah, I guess so. I just – you know, when it comes against a team on their, you know, when they've maybe got 50 active guys, this is just like, it's not, it's definitely not something that, like, I'm going to go grab a water bottle from where the band's sitting and spray it up in the air on their sidelines. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, you know, come on, guys. You, you won nine games last year. That's, I'm not saying, you know, don't celebrate because you won. Just, you know, handle yourselves as champions. Also, was that the Southern Miss game, was that the one where the fan was trying to fight the team? Yes, and then I, I was going to say it was it was a uh, the whole as in the whole program, even the fans. I, I'm not sure what happened, but I saw the video on Twitter. So yeah, the whole the whole shebang, everybody, fans, players. Let's let's be better. <laughs> let's be better. Uh, man, we got to let out fans got to let out their frustrations in 2020 somehow. You might as well be on Southern Miss, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move on to Tyler. Um, <laughs> all right, Tyler, it's same thing, man. Uh, you know, Western's kind of trending up five and six right now. Got Charlotte left on the schedule. Of course, they re you know, rescheduled that game. So possibility they could go six and six, go to a bowl game. I, you know, I don't know what the bowl situation is. I, I think you can be winless and go to a bowl, really. But, uh, you know, so I, guess, I think it's just whatever logistically, uh, logistically kind of works out for your team. But uh, just give us your thoughts on, on how this team's kind of finishing up so far this year. Uh, kind of surprising, to be honest. Uh, they weren't playing good football at all, you know, early in the season. And kind of they get down there, you just have two wins. But the win back-to-back -back games, your first time this year, is pretty big. Um, the FIU game, FIU is obviously – they're 0-5 now. They had a lot of cancellations. As a matter of fact, their game against Law Tech is now canceled for this weekend. So, one more cancellation for them. But um, this just is a big win. You know, you put up 38 points, finally. Uh, Gage Walker rushed for over 100 yards, finally. Uh, Tyrell was sharp, had two rushing touchdowns, which was nice to see. The defense and Eli were all over the place. You know, got a pick six, a fumble recovery for a touchdown. Just all around, those are best game of the year so far. I know, it's like I said, came against FIU, who's been struggling this year. But they're playing better football now. There's still things to clean up. But, you know, four wins now, uh, three and three in conference play. If you go to Charlotte Tuesday morning, eat your breakfast, get a win there. Heck, you got five wins, you might get a bowl game somewhere. Um, I know sometimes five teams get – I mean, five win teams get in. Um, sometimes, sometimes they don't. But this year, you know, there's no win requirement, so we'll see what happens. But I think they're training up, or like you said, uh, it's been good, good things to see. Uh, but obviously, one more game this year, we'll see how they finish it off with. Yeah, it'd be uh, interesting to kind of see how how this plays out. I mean, yeah, especially if they beat Charlotte and they finish six and six on the season, you know. So, uh, what bowl games they go to? Bowl games are kind of uh, open season right now, you know, in terms of. You know, you can go there when you're winless. So, I, I, I have no idea how that's going to work out. And, obviously, you got to think about the, the feasibility on, on the financial situation, too. You know, you don't want to travel too far. It costs a lot of money. You know, and there's no fans in the stands, maybe. You know, I think it just depends on which state you go into. So, there's a kind of a lot to uh, consider before we talk about bowl games. But, you know, if Western finishes off this season with three straight wins, regardless of bowl game, I mean, that's 
that's pretty bad. It's pretty impressive. I mean, considering the fight that they had and, and the way they were playing earlier on in the year. So, um, well, like we mentioned, they've got one game left. That's against Charlotte. Charlotte has had a ton of problems trying to get games in uh, so far this year. Um, let me look here. I've got it in my notes. Where's it at? I think they've had like five cancellations. Yeah, the North Carolina game has been canceled. Georgia State was postponed. Uh, I think they had a game against Gardner Webb that got canceled. Middle Tennessee Marshall, the last two games they've had on the schedule, has been postponed because Charlotte's had COVID issues. This is why the Western Kentucky game is getting pushed back to December 1st. Uh, Charlotte's got COVID issues they're trying to get over the hump in. So uh, Western Kentucky's being very accommodating in that department, trying to get this game in. You look at Western Kentucky, too. I mean, they're one of, probably one of the only few teams that haven't had any COVID issues with their schedule and gotten all their games in so far. So, I mean, that's pretty incredible when you think about it, too. But Charlotte is two and three on the season. Like I said, they've had a lot of cancellations, postponements. Um, what have you seen in this Charlotte team so far in the research you've done? Key players, I know they don't have a lot of games on the docket. Maybe not a lot of stats to go by, but uh, – what have you kind of seen from this team? I'll start with you, Tyler Mansfield, who – is that somebody knocking on your window back there trying to want a car? Wants a car? I'm just kidding, man. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know why it's here. Doors are locked. But, you know, if I'm asked to do something, and I have free time, I do it. So, when, you're, when your friend owns a car lot, you go and buy and sit here and make it easy $100 for the day to do nothing. So, I'll, I'll take it. But, uh, speaking of Charlotte, I have not – I've not looked at them. I mean, I've not watched any any film, looked at any players. The only thing I've seen from them is our Twitter feed every week on Monday morning saying our game's postponed for this weekend. That's literally all I've seen out of Charlotte this week, this year. That's all. Oh, I've man. Seen. So I don't, I don't know what to expect out of them. They have a great coach. They had a good team last year. Uh, went to a bowl game, won a bowl game. Uh, Will Healy's a great coach. He's been offered job. He's been in job discussions for some of the Power Five gigs. Just a bright young offensive guy. So I mean, they might be a solid team come Tuesday. We have no idea. But I think this is a chance for Western to, again, play a team that has a lot, a lot of games. We have much more experience right now than they do. Um, maybe it's a chance for you to go out there and get a fifth win. So, well, what, is it fifth wins or sixth win, Sean? I thought you said uh, five earlier. Is it five it, now? It'll be five, yeah. This this will be yeah. our 11th game. Okay, yeah. See, I'm, I'm drunk right now. You know, I mean, so. it happens. It happens. But, yeah, I think it's another chance for them to get a win over a team that you can't see much on paper out of this year. Kind of go in there to see what you do against FIU and see what happens. But, yeah, maybe Casey and Noah, the experts, know more than I do. We'll see. No, you summed up Charlotte pretty good. I mean, they're, they uh, they haven't played a lot of games this year, and uh, they have a coach that's fiery and has been in discussions for power five jobs. Will Healy, who obviously came from – Austin P and turned that program around who was that program was down in the dumps and winless whenever he got there and, and he turned them into a, a contenders uh, very fiery guy they have new uniforms too which look pretty cool so I do, I do dig the Charlotte uniforms and uh, the logo brand design and everything but anyway also they have the uh, and also uh, last season after they had a win they have what's called club lit they, they have a sign they take to every press to every locker room with them and it says club lit and like pink leathers and if they win, they turn it on and have, like, a full-on dance party after wins in, in their locker room. I do know that. That's pretty cool. See, that's how you, re that's how you celebrate responsibly after winning yes. a game. Instead of going uh -huh. to the sideline and busting open water bottles and spraying them in the air. You wait for the locker room. <laughs> hey, there's a different kind of club lit on every campus, no way. It's just a little different here at Western Kentucky, okay? <laughs> All right, Noah. Noah, since you're uh, since you uh, chimed in there, tell us what you uh, want to say about Charlotte. What do you know about them, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, well, there's there's not a lot. I haven't watched them in like two months because they haven't basically like they haven't played in two months. But uh, Chris Reynolds, same same guy under center this year was last year. Uh, kind of like Asher O'Hara, more refined thrower, uh, more under control. Uh, he's got great ability outside of the pocket, uh, throws a tighter spiral, uh, better accuracy in between windows. Uh, and they've got a linebacker I really like, uh, kind of a ball hawk. His name's Tyler Murray. I believe he's third or fourth on the team in tackles. Uh, they don't get after the quarterback much. Uh, other than that, they don't really – to play five games, They don't. their numbers are not very high to be two and three. I mean, they kind of look like Western's off offense. You know, they're kind of anemic. Uh, they got Aaron McAllister who's their uh, kind of like their scat back. Uh, I, I believe he returns kicks, and he's a, he's a big play waiting to happen, but he's only got 247 yards on the year or something like that. So uh, 
Yeah, Charlotte's kind of weird. Duke blew them out. And then I'm trying to think of – I think they beat North Texas. Uh, North Texas is kind of like a, put your track shoes on because we're going to score a lot of points. They, they barely got by UTEP. FAU beat them in a close one. Like, they beat Western. And then uh, App State kind of – kind of smashed them so uh, yeah Charlotte don't really know a lot about them uh, and as, as I said for Zoomcast I'm kind of I'm on the basketball season now so that's why I'm, I'm in I'm in basketball mode <laughs> no we'll, we'll get there Noah just hang I'm, tight I'm being patient I'm, I'm really being patient I am uh, I am familiar with Charlotte's leading rusher Trey Harvest and he was uh, recruited heavily by Vanderbilt coming out of high school um, so I know he's their leading rusher at Charlotte. So he's he's a guy I'm quite familiar with. He's a pretty talented kid. But Casey, I'll throw it to you. Uh, Charlotte, give us what you know about Charlotte and uh, and everything. Yeah, totally. So going into the season, first let me let it be known that I interned in Charlotte over the summer. So I thought maybe you know by the end of the season, barring COVID restrictions, I might be able to go to this game. You know, say what's up to my uh, my former coworkers. Shout out to Mario Washington and those guys at ESPN seven thirty. The game. I uh, was hoping I might get to go to this game, but unfortunately that's not the case. And it's moved to Tuesday at 9.30. So definitely not an ideal situation, but nonetheless, a good way to finish up the season for WKU. Good challenging game. Uh, as far as Charlotte though, uh, though goes, uh, common opponents wise, they've only played one team that WKU has, and that's FAU. And they lost to FAU in similar fashion that we did. Low scoring game, close game. They lost 21 to 17. So a uh, pretty similar team, kind of like Noah said. Uh, offense isn't going to really go at you and put up a lot of points. More of a defensive team. In fact, they got the 32nd ranked pass defense in the nation right now as it stands. 203 yards per game and a relatively small sample size. But it's also worth noting that WKU's defense has stepped it up quite considerably as far as rankings in the nation go. Uh, they got the second ranked pass defense currently as it stands in the nation with 165 yards per game allowed. That's pretty impressive. So it's going to be key for us to shut down the pass again. And then actually the 28th overall defense in the entire NCAA at 339 yards allowed per game. So WKU's defense has enormously stepped it up. And they're going to have to do that again against Charlotte to get their fifth win of the season. Uh, like Noah was saying, Chris Reynolds, pretty solid season so far. 1,100 yards, uh, not too many touchdowns, though. You know, just six with two interceptions. Uh, the spread on this game is 47 and a half. So it's uh, kind of, you know, a mid-scoring, more low-scoring kind of game they're predicting. Uh, right now the line is at Charlotte minus one. So kind of a pick em kind of game. Real up in there, two evenly ranked teams, I would say, that are very comparable. Uh, and Charlotte, like we were discussing, hasn't played since Halloween. And that was at Duke, and they lost 53 to 19. So they're certainly going to have a chip on their shoulder coming into this game. I fully expect them to give 100%. This is like their Super Bowl to end the year. Uh, I mean, if they win this game, they'll be three and three. So they might be able to make a bowl. I think either of these two teams could really make a bowl based off of their strength of schedule. So that'll be real interesting. That's going to make it a really competitive game between these two. But uh, it would be really nice for WKU to go out with a win, five and six, somehow make a bowl, maybe even finish six and six if they win that bowl. Don't want to get too ahead of myself. But uh, overall, this is going to be a great game to see uh, how good these two teams were in an adverse field season. And uh, I'm excited for it overall. It's okay to get ahead of yourself, Casey. I thought they had five wins this whole podcast, so, you know. <laughs> No worries. Uh, by the way, Casey, I mean, to, uh, a Tuesday 9.30 a.m. kickoff has road trip written all over that, baby. Dude, I mean, I don't even know if they're allowing fans, but it would be really cool to see that stadium. Because when I went to Charlotte, I didn't get to see their campus, so it would be awesome to see. It's uh, I think they I think they said they're, like, selling over 1,000, maybe close to 1,100 tickets, mm. so. You know, mm, you know. There, are possi- or there are possibilities, just saying, just saying. So uh, with that being said, we'll go through real quick. Um, how do you, I mean, obviously this game is over a week and a, a couple of weeks from being played or a week from being played, but uh, give us your predictions on how you think this will play out and, uh, and uh, score predictions. I'll start with Tyler. Tyler. I think it'll be a, I think it'll be a Western win. Um, I think Charlotte, you know, with the uncertainty of their season, uh, not much experience, not many games played, kind of like FIU. Uh, we saw Western score 38 last week. Uh, I think they'll stay in the maybe the 30 range this week and keep improving in that category. Defense will be great. I think I'm going to ride the tops this week with a – give me a 31 31-21 game. 31-21. I'm taking the over on this one. I think points will be scored. Uh, I think tops is going to hit that 30 marker again. I think the defense will do, you know, pretty well there at Charlotte. Uh, I think it will be – 
one of those games where Western might get down early or uh, might, allow, might, allow, might allow the first, the first touchdown. I can't talk today. Uh, but I think eventually they'll pull away and get it by 10 point win there at Charlotte. Not talking is not a good thing when you're trying to sell cars, my man. Get it together. <laughs> not good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, uh, Casey, I'll throw it to you. Uh, score predictions for this game. Yeah, uh, similar to what Tyler said, kind of a similar point differential. I'm going to go just over the over at uh, 48 total points. Uh, WKU 28, Charlotte 20. I fully expect WKU's defense to give us at least another touchdown the way they've been playing lately. Uh, I really think D'Angelo Malone's uh, poised for a big game, seeing as this could be his last game ever for the Hilltoppers. He's really got some draft stock. He wants to get back up there after this rough season he ha he's had. So I think he's going to have a big game. I think Terrell Pigron ends up uh, managing the game again pretty well in this one. I think he's coming to his own pretty late in the season. And I think the offense can put up at least 21 points, give him three touchdowns, give Gage Walker another 100-yard game. And I think this is going to be a strong finish to the season. As Ty Tyson Helton has showed last season, he did. He finished the season with three straight wins, looking strong. I think he's going to do that again this year. So, tops 28, uh, 49ers 20. Sounds good. I unmuted myself there. Noah, score predictions. Charlotte, Western Kentucky. Noah, give it to us. Uh, I don't I don't know if they, if they cover the, uh, you know, I don't know, 47 half. I don't know if they, if they get that. Uh, I'm going to say – 26-20, Western Kentucky, and that's I think that's just, that's what I'm gonna ride with here. I just don't think that uh, I don't think they're fit to score 30 points again. Maybe a defensive touchdown. Uh, the offense still has yet to score 30 points alone without defensive help. Obviously, the first time they've gotten 30 all year was this past Saturday because of two defensive touchdowns. Something, and if that doesn't happen, 24, 26 is points, and then Charlotte gets 20. All right, sounds good. Now we'll switch over to basketball. Noah, you can now officially get excited, okay? <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> I'm fired right. up, just like basketball. you, buddy. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start with you, Tyler, just because there, there's been a lot of moving and shaking here to start the I season. Can't. Hey, we're going to be in Nebraska, and then the next day, hey, we're going to be in South Dakota. So, um, so now uh, Western is officially starting their season, I believe, unless things change. Uh, at the Bad Boy Mowers crossover classic, Bad Boy Mowers. Uh, hey, it's a bowl game. They can play in that and the bowl game. Yeah. That's, that's a bowl game, man. They can play in that and that. That's Bad Boy, yeah. baby. Mow with uh, the net, dude. I think Bad Boy – I think the Bad Boy Mowers bowl game is still uh, still a thing. Man, Mow with the net. They have great commercials, that's for sure. Hey, a little, a little, was, a little eye popping. Slogan, I can't. You see those commercials one time a year, and it's during the bowl game. <laughs> You're hooked. It just so happens to know it. Yeah, bad boys, bad boys, good with uh, good with their sponsorship. They've got they've got a nice little slogan like Tyler remembers, but I, he probably remembers the uh, the, the eye candy too. More than, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, th this is going on in South Dakota at the cool. Uh, the cool venue called the Pentagon, which is a, a really cool place for college basketball. Stanford. Definitely something on my bucket list. I'd like to go uh, check out a game there. That's for sure. So they kick off on the 25th. Uh, it's on Wednesday uh, against Northern Il – jeez, Northern Iowa. <laughs> no, I was about to say Northern Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> Northern Iowa at 2.30. I think at 2.30, is that an Eastern time? Uh, 3.30. 3.30 Central. Okay. 30 Central on ESPNU. On ESPNU. So, Tyler, uh, tell us a little bit more about the opening. Uh, just switching over to the South Dakota venue and, and what you kind of see from this tournament and potential matchups for Western Kentucky. Obviously, they're playing Northern Iowa to begin to kick things off. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so, the Nebraska bubble fell apart. Uh, I think LSU backed out first and this team backed out and it all went downhill from there. So, they, the Washington decided we're not going to fool with that. So, they backed out. Got a contract over in South Dakota. They're heading there now. Uh, first game is Northern Iowa. They went 25-6 and six last year, uh, won their conference title, uh, had a finish with a net rating of, I think, 49. So they're a very talented team, brought back a lot this year. And then I think they win that game. They play the next day on Thanksgiving against Memphis or St. Mary's winner. And if they lose, they play vice versa. It'll be St. Mary's and Memphis again. So uh, a loaded field it includes West Virginia, uh, Memphis, like I said, St. Mary's, Western, um, Northern Iowa, I think the other two. Memphis. Memphis is the biggest one there. But yeah, there's yeah. there's really good teams there. 
Um, I guess. In uh, Wichita State, uh, the yeah. it no longer has Greg Marshall as their head coach. They don't have <laughs> yeah. any players. Either. They literally have no players. They all transfer. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting team right there. But it could be Western West Virginia in the final. It could be, you know, Western Memphis in the semis. There's a lot of, a lot of observations there, a lot of scenarios that could play out. But a cool tournament to go open season is. Uh, and they flew out this morning to there now. Uh, and then I think after they get done playing there, they stay on the road and fly to Louisville and go to the Gold House and play in Louisville's bubble, which they'll now play Louisville on the first game, December 1st. Then they'll play against um, – uh, let's take on Prairie View on the third, and then back to back games will be on the fourth or close against Little Rock now. So, schedule changes are happening as college basketball is going to be strange this year. But, um, I will be at the Louisville Bubble for I think all three games, at, at least the first two. So, looking forward to seeing that. I saw pictures today, they have plexiglass set up around the, the benches, and media is up here now. It's just be a little strange. But this week's games you can watch on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPNU. So, it's much better than. Uh, Nebraska's flowsports.com. So it's an upgrade. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that, I was going to say that's a, that's a good thing about this bubble being uh, at South Dakota. Uh, it's on ESPN, man. You can watch every Western game uh, every day while they're up there. And, uh, like hey, man, Thursday, cut your turkey, get your ham and mashed potatoes, sit down, turn the game on. That's it. There you go. Good plug. Uh, Tyler, give me the bad boy mowers steam again. <laughs> That's bad boy, baby. Mo with an attitude. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have to be the spokesman. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Noah, I know you're excited. I'll get to Casey in a minute. But Noah, I know you're you're chomping at the bit to talk about some basketball here. So what do you uh, what do you think about this opening uh, opening bubble tournament uh, uh, for Western Kentucky opening up here? They're scheduling aggressively. Like I think in the past you've seen you've seen the program put some not some cupcakes, but just some you know you know these you're going to win these non-conference games against some of these smaller schools. I mean they still have those games like Campbellsville, Tennessee Tech at home in December, but I mean you potentially through two weeks of basketball will maybe have played Northern Iowa, maybe Memphis, West Virginia, Louisville, Little Arkansas, Little Rock and Prairie View A&M, Rhode Island, I mean, and Mississippi Valley State, all teams are tournament teams and win their conference year in and year out. Um, not West Virginia, but West Virginia, as you know, Huggy's got a, you know, it's Press Virginia up there. They're a 21 program every single year. So I, I'm impressed, and I think you're going to find out really early how good this team actually is because I went on the record a couple weeks ago last time we did, about a month ago we did this and said that this is the most talented team that maybe this – campus has ever seen, if you ask me. So I think you're going to find out really early. I think you're going to find out really early if that's true or not. I think that they're low. I think you could play 10 guys deep potentially, uh, depending on development of the younger guys like uh, McKnight and Milton. And then uh, obviously with the addition of Frampton is going to be really interesting to see the you know, perimeter offense because in the past Western has you know, been inconsistent with shooting three. And you thought you had that last year with Cam Justice, but then he got hurt and he struggled to make shots down the stretch. So it'll be interesting to see if Frampton is as good as advertised. So, yeah, I'm just excited for them to throw the ball up and, you know, we see how good they actually are. Sounds good. Yep. Uh, Press Virginia. I like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Casey, we'll throw it to you. Uh, thoughts on the basketball season this uh this uh, bad boy Moore's crossover classic at Western's <laughs> kicking off in, obviously. And then they're going from that straight to the Louisville bubble, which has some good matchups as well. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned all the good matchups. And like Noah said, all these tournament teams from last year, a uh, few stats here to note. WKU's first five known opponents on the schedule this year went 110 and 45 last year. Uh, the first seven – won at least 19 games, and then at least four are in the top 60 from net last year. So, I mean, that is very impressive. That's a very tough schedule to start the season. A uh, few teams can, you know, say the same as Western came, but Western, I believe, is fully built for it. Uh, they're going to face the Northern Iowa team in this first game. That is uh, very prepared, though. They got a couple guys coming back from last year that are juniors that are going to be standouts. Uh, junior A.J. Green, not football A.J. Green, but basketball A.J. Green. He averaged uh, just, just under 20 points per game last year at the guard position, three assists per game, three rebounds. And then Austin Fife forward, he's a junior as well. He averaged just over 11 points, uh, two assists, and then over eight rebounds a game last year. Those are going to be the two guys to watch for Northern Iowa in that first game. 
Uh, Northern Iowa was a 25 and six team last year, 14 and four in the conference. That was the Missouri Valley Conference. They were the regular season champs in that conference. Uh, and they were 16 and 0 at home last year. So this team is no pushover at all. They are a very tough squad, but they did get upset in that first round of the MVC tournament, which was cut short. Uh, they lost to Drake in that last season. So a tough way to end their season last year for Northern Iowa, but it's going to be a very big matchup for experienced guys like Tavion Hollingsworth and Charles Bassey with those two guys coming back. And I got to shout out my man, Davion McKnight, representing the Collins High School, Shelby County, Kentucky. I'm an alum myself, just like him. Mr. Basketball there. He's poised for a big season, I believe, for the Hilltoppers. Can't wait to see that young guy play. And uh, I'm excited for basketball season as well, fellas. It's going to be a big year for the Tops, I believe. Casey, that's why we brought you on to the Zoom cast, so you can uh, counterbalance our nonsense with actual stats. <laughs> <laughs> love it, man. I love it. Good dynamic. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Casey, you're wearing your Rams gear. You're a big Rams fan. Grew up a fan of them while they were in St. Louis. Um, yeah, man, just uh, give a shout out to the Rams. Big game tonight. So, oh yeah, man. I mean, this is huge. Uh, Tom Brady is five and one against my Rams all time in his career, including two Super Bowl wins. I mean, I'm just tired of this, man. I'm tired of Tom Brady. I don't care if he's on the Patriots or the Bucks. I just like Tom Brady, and tonight he's got to go down. I want to see Aaron Donald put him in the ground in Tampa Bay. I want to see Jalen Ramsey pick him off. I just want to see us dismantle the Buccaneers, man. I'm tired of this guy. I was going to say, what happened the last time that Tom Brady played the Rams? Man, like, let's not bring it up, dude. Three points <laughs> in the Super Bowl is just an embarrassment <laughs> to the entire NFL. Uh, I mean, I, I thought that Super Bowl was – at least it was a game, you know. I mean, it wasn't a high oh, scoring yeah. game. Yeah, sure, it was a game, but, I mean, when you put up three points, it's just like, we made it here finally, and we didn't show up, so. And they had a couple opportunities that just kind of slipped through the fingers there, you know, so. Chances yeah, to... well, the good thing about tonight's game is I only got to defeat one of them. I only got to defeat Brady tonight and not Belichick, because th those, those two guys were probably just go. the most disliked guys in my book in the entire league, so. Yeah. Just, I'm glad it's just Brady That's tonight. All I got to say. I will never forget that uh, Casey and I actually had a class together that year where they played the Super Bowl the Friday before. He had his Tory Holt jersey on, like the old school, like the, the St. Louis Rams. Yeah. His old school hat on. And I was like, man, this guy, I was like, I hope he's not let down this weekend. And that just wasn't the case. So I don't know if he was in class on Monday or not. I don't remember. But I just remember thinking about it. I was like, oh, that, that was tough. But. Yeah, that Super Bowl was a good. That was a good Super Bowl. I watched that one three or four times over. I learned a lot about what I know about dime and nickel defense with man-to-man -man coverage from watching that game because that was a that was a chess that was a chess match. That wasn't a football game. That was a chess match. Dude, I'm telling you, after that game, it was a terrible week. I think it rained for like two days on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, I had to drive back all the way from Oldham County all the way down to Bowling Green right after that game, and I think I like cried on the drive back. Man, it was just like. <laughs> Dude, I've been a Rams fan since the terrible days with, like, Steven Jackson and all the terrible coaches. And it's just like we finally make it and do that. So, it's just like I try to put that out of my memory. But, hey, we'll see what happens tonight. Last time my favorite team made the Super Bowl, I also cried. But I was nine whenever that happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that was a little, a little different. But, you know, I, you know, I understand. I, I, know, I know the emotions. Some uh, deep confessions there by Casey. <laughs> <laughs> And it's fast, man. So, uh, all right, anything else uh, you guys want to add before we hop off here? I can't think of anything. All I got to say, it's been great to be back again. It's been too long. Since it I'm okay. Right. We'll, we'll try to do this again next week and uh, and keep it rolling since bat we're going to be transitioning over to basketball now. And, and Noah's pretty pumped up. And Casey brings stats. And, and Tyler is always consistent Tyler. No matter where he's at, whether it's a car lot – office or his home or his apartment and Noah Noah's not bad whenever he's being captured by the Taliban too so <laughs> him in the clutch. you got uh, Tyler's also consistent at the beach as well I mean he was on right that's <laughs> true here I go I I forgot. He's still the same boy still the same guy I forgot about the beach yes he's also consistent there as well so he says he's gave us many backdrops uh throughout our zoom chats that's right so all right, well, we'll keep it going, guys. Uh, before we go, uh, I'd also like to say thank you all for everything you do at InsideHilltoppersports.com. That's where you can find all your guys' work. And uh, you guys got anything else to plug you guys are doing outside of the website? 
I'll yeah, see you yeah, on. of course. Uh, just, you know, okay. Twitter, Twitter real quick, uh, at the Casey Warner. I got some good stuff coming up this week. Got the Pro Topper update. I'm sure my boys down below got some other stuff they want to uh, plug in as well. But we always got the best content here on Inside Hilltop Sports. You already know that. There you go. Uh, Tyler, you got anything to add real quick? Because we're less than a minute. VandySports.com. That's all I got to say. Hoop season's arriving. I'll see you guys in Nashville. Well, I won't see because fans ain't allowed, but hopefully I'll be there somehow. Right. Congrats on the gig. And last thing before we go, uh, Tyler, hit us with the bad boy motor scene again. <laughs> anything you want to say, Noah? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm good. This uh, My time is up. Hey, this, this podcast, that's bad boy, baby. Mo with an attitude. Uh, <laughs>